Hello everyone, my name is Asisi Pombingileli and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be answering a grade 9 natural sciences question paper. This was a provincial paper. We are going to be focusing on answering um, the questions based on the cells as the basic unit of life topic. So without wasting any time, guys, please remember to subscribe to my channel. Please remember to like this video, comment down below, share this video with your classmates and also your schoolmates. Um, and also, I am welcome to suggestions. So if you have specific question papers that you would like me to go through, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I can find the question paper online. If I can't find it online, I can request that you email me the question paper. Then I can record a video answering the question paper and upload it for you because I'm here to help you guys. So please, please, please do let me know in the comment section. All right, let us look at this question. We are going to be answering two questions, guys, in this video. Um, the diagram below shows the link between two important organelles. So it's telling us that the diagram below um, shows the link between two important organelles, tiny organs. Remember, these are organs that we find within cells and the processes that they perform. Study the diagram below and answer questions that follow. This you always need to read, guys. That little text or little information above a diagram, you always, always need to read and understand it. Then whenever you see a question or whenever you have a question with diagrams, you need to be able to analyze the diagram first before you even attempt to answer. Now, they've already told us that we are having two organelles here, and these two organelles are basically um, having processes that they perform. So it's easy for us to identify these organelles. It's easy for us to identify that organelle 1 is the chloroplast, right? And it's easy to identify because of the double uh, membrane, because of the um, thylakoids. Remember, one disc is called the thylakoid and a pack is called the granum. So it's easy for us to identify that this is a chloroplast and we're able to see the equation here. So in chloroplast, photosynthesis takes place, and that's the equation. In the first part of the equation, this would be the requirements, and um, this side would be the products of photosynthesis. I mean, that's information that you know already, so it should be easy for you to, to answer the questions after you have analyzed the diagram. Then with the second organelle, what we are having here is the mitochondria. And in the mitochondria, we are having cellular respiration taking place. Above here is the formula for cellular respiration. So the first two here would be the requirements. Then this side, you are having the products of cellular respiration. So if we're looking um, at our photosynthesis equation, we are having the requirements. There's three requirements and there's two products. Okay, easy peasy stuff. Now, name the organelles in which the following uh, takes place. So you're having two processes, and this is can be easily confused, guys, this question. It's not asking you to identify the processes. I think the next question is asking you to identify the processes, but this one is asking you to name the organelles in which process one and process two take place. Process one, you just look at the arrows, obviously. That is the process that is taking place within the chloroplast, right? So the organelle in question here will be the chloroplast. Then process two will take place. There is process two arrow coming out. Process two will take place in the mitochondria. Easy peasy stuff. Identify the processes. Now they are asking us to identify the processes. This is easy. We said process one takes place in the chloroplast. So that means that process would be photosynthesis. And we said process two takes place in the mitochondria. So that is cellular respiration. That is also easy. We are also looking at the marker location, guys. One mark, one mark, one mark, one mark. So we are definitely getting um, the correct um, answers and we're getting full marks here. Again, guys, um, if you want to pause the video, you're more than welcome to pause the video and try and attempt the questions yourself first. Um, yeah, try and attempt the questions first, then we obviously play the video. 
um, to check your answers. So let's go to 2.2.3. So 2.2.3 saying the glucose produced in process 1. Where is process 1? Photosynthesis. The glucose produced in process 1 is used in process 2. What is the gas represented by Y? So the glucose produced in process 1, which is photosynthesis, that glucose is used in cellular respiration. What is the gas represented by Y? Let's scroll up. Where is Y? There is Y. There is Y. Okay, so there is the glucose. Um, the, these are requirements of cellular respiration. Glucose plus this gas, which is um, um, X, and uh, we are having a gas as a product here, which is Y. This is the same Y that we have. This is the same gas that we have as a requirement of photosynthesis. So in photosynthesis, this gas is a requirement. Um, then, however, in cellular respiration, it is a product. So that is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Then, uh, 224, energy is released in process 2. Process 2 is cellular respiration, and we know that um, energy will be released. ATP energy is released in cellular respiration. What is the gas represented by X? Let's scroll up. Oh, there is X. Okay, so X is the gas that is required for cellular respiration to take place. We know in order for cellular respiration to take place, we need two requirements, right? We need glucose and this gas, and in this case, it is X. But this is the same gas that is produced as a byproduct in photosynthesis, and we know the gas is glucose. So in order for cellular respiration to take place, we... Oh, listen, what did I say? I said the gas is glucose. No, the gas is oxygen. Sorry. Glucose, yes, is one of the requirements, but um, the question is asking us for the gas represented by X. So that is oxygen. Apologies. Oxygen. All right. Then um, 225. Why is this gas mentioned above, which is uh, oxygen, important to human beings? And check here, it's just one mark, right? So the marker location for this question is one. So we know that this gas helps um, to break down food or glucose or carbo uh, carbohydrates to release energy. So you could have mentioned that. It helps. And they've asked important, uh, important to humans. Okay, so it helps human cells. to break down to break down carbohydrates or you can say to break down uh, glucose or to break down food and obviously it breaks down glucose in order to release energy so the tick would be here at the end or you could have said um, hum humans need it for breathing, uh, but essentially this oxygen that we breathe in, uh, it's basically to break down uh, carbohydrates. So we'll breathe in the oxygen, obviously through our nose, then it goes to the lungs, then in the lungs it will diffuse into the blood, then the blood will transport it to the cells, and the cells it will get into uh, the mitochondria in order for cellular respiration to take place. So essentially, I think this is the perfect answer. And obviously, we know this happens for, for growth, reproduction, and other metabolic processes. Um, yeah, I think you all know that in grade 9. Okay, so we're done with question 2.2. Let's go to 2.3 now, which is a table. 2.3. Complete the table below by indicating with a cross whether the organelle or component will be present in a plant cell only or an animal cell only or both plant and animal cells. So we are having the structure or organelle or component that we need to indicate here with a cross whether the organelle we are finding it in plant cells only animal cells only 
or in both plants and animal cells and this is for formax okay so the first one is a cell wall um i think this one is obvious we know that we find the cell wall um in plant cells only so that means we are going to indicate with the cross here so the cell wall we find it in cell in sorry in plant cells only and we know it consists of a cellulose we know all of that information um so if we were to compare the two we would have a plant cell and then we'll have an animal cell so with the plant cell it will have a cell wall which is normally rigid and regular in shape then we'll have an animal cell but with the plant cell you will have a cell wall and a cell membrane and in an animal cell what am i saying let me cancel all of that so we have to cancel all of that okay so we know that in plant cells we have the cell wall but we don't have it in, in, in animal cells then the cell membrane we find the cell membrane in both plant and animal cells so our cross will be over here okay then cytoplasm same with the cytoplasm the jelly like substance that fills up the cell membrane we find it in both plant and animal cells so there is our cross then a few small vacuoles are completely absent um that is in animal cells only so in animal cells we will find few small vacuoles or these vacuoles may be completely absent um and in our plant cells we normally find one large vacuole so that's how you were supposed to answer this table then you get one mark for each answer